good to see you. Come on in. God is good. Oh. You know, I'm quite happy because uh, we're getting closer to my weather. Sorry, Amy. She's wearing gloves already. <laughs> oh, praise God. You know, we're in some uh, times, aren't we? And it's, it's really going to be important for us as believers to be able to recognize the presence of God and, and call upon the presence of God to guide us, to lead us into the things that we are going to be dealing with in our, in, uh, our future. So with this song that we're about ready to sing, I, I want you to really make it almost like a prayer asking God for this, telling that he, you love his presence and you desire more of him. So let's stand up. Father God, we come to you in the name of your son, Jesus, and we love you. We love you. We love your presence. Spirit of the living God, we ask you to fall in this place. You're our honored guests here. And today we're going to join with the saints of heaven to give you glory, to honor you to declare your kingship over us. In Jesus' name, amen. In the glory of your presence I find
who will not fear you, Lord, and bring glory to your name. For you alone are holy. All nations will come and worship before you. For your righteous acts have been revealed. It's written in Revelation 15, verse 4. Psalms 86, 8 through 10 say, Among the gods there is none like you, Lord. No deeds can compare with yours. All nations you have made will come and worship before you, Lord. They will bring glory to your name. For you are great and you do marvelous deeds. You alone are God. With this in mind, we constantly pray for you that our God may make you worthy of his calling and that by his power he may bring to fruition for every desire for goodness and for every deed prompted by faith. We pray this so that the name of the Lord Jesus may be glorified in you and you in him according to the grace of our God and the Lord Jesus Christ. That is written in 2 Thessalonians 1 verse 11 and 12. Glorify the name. That's why we're here today. Amen. Thank you for your glory. And we, we 
sing and we pray and we ask you to show us your glory. And we want to realize what we're asking for is for you to show us Jesus. Jesus is the glory of the Father. He is the exact representation of his nature. We ask you to show us your glory. Reveal Jesus. Reveal Jesus in all that he is, all that he thinks, and all that he does in his ways to us as we worship you. We open up our hearts and we open up our eyes and we ask you to supernaturally open up the eyes of our hearts to see who you are. Reveal yourself. Reveal yourself. Show us your glory. 
to take our eyes off of ourselves. Take your eyes off yourself and look at Him. Because if your focus is on yourself, you're going to have what you have. Father, I ask that you would cause every person's heart in here to come aflame, have a burning desire for you. We look to you, Jesus, because you're the strength of our life. Jesus, you're our wisdom. You're our righteousness. When we focus on you, Lord, things change. Our thoughts change. The outlook is better. We surrender to you, Jesus. We lay down our own plans. We give you our problems and leave them in your hands. And when we do that, we can gamble like a calf, free from the stall. Running free without a care in the world. Even though people around us are losing their minds, (laughs) worrying, crying, complaining, We have a perfect peace because our eyes are fixed on you. Our ears are attentive to your leading, to your call, to your word. I thank you, Lord, for such a great adventure that you've put us all on. And I thank you, Father, that we're going to live out our purpose. and bring you glory and honor. In Jesus' wonderful name, amen and amen. Well, greet one another. You may be seated. Good morning. Welcome to Community Life Church. It is a beautiful, brisk fall morning. I love the autumn leaf changes. It's just gorgeous. I love it. I love it. When you're a Texas girl and you don't get to see the leaves change, they just either stay green or fall. There's no in-between. There's something beautiful. (laughs) You really just take it in and appreciate it. Uh, So it is our pleasure to spend this morning with you. Uh, Our mission here at Community Life Church is to help people know God, find purpose, and experience life. And to do that, I think of autumn and I think of change. You know, in the season of autumn, we see those leaves changing. um, But they're actually dying, aren't they? Although they're beautiful. And I think when we're changing, God looks looks at us and says, oh, how beautiful. 
how beautiful it is we die to ourselves and instead become all that he has created us to be. And that truly is our mission. So uh, if you are our first time guest, welcome. It's a pleasure to have you. We have a Connect card in the seat back pocket in front of you. If you don't mind just taking a moment and filling that out, maybe you have, sometimes I understand it's your first time, you're not ready for that, but maybe you've been coming for a while um, and you are making Community Life Church your home. Make sure that you take a moment and fill that out so that we have a way to contact you, especially as cold weather starts to come in, right? Not all of us want to, to go out into uh really bad roads, right, if something's going to be changing. And so we always want to make sure that we can communicate with you if for any reason we do need to close the church, though our hope is that we never have to, right? <laughs> um, so that is our goal is not to, but we want to make sure that we can contact you. Uh, so take that moment and fill that out. Uh, and for our tithe and offering uh, this morning, uh, I wanted to take a moment and just, as we're singing this last song, and when we come to a place of God where we truly, our heart is a place of holy ground and we're surrendered to God, it's amazing how he truly becomes our security, right? Because money cannot buy everything. As much as we hear around us, right, money can buy you whatever you need. And while it can make us comfortable and maybe make things a little bit easier, it can always bring us the health that we want, right? It can always even bring us financial security because in the moment of the swing of our money, right, we feel those ups and downs emotionally. We feel the pain of it. And so there isn't security in money, but there is security in our Lord and Savior. And that's what Proverbs uh, 3.26 says, for the Lord is your security. Right there, just plain, the Lord is your security. And so whenever we come to that place we have with him and fully secure in him, we get to walk this life a little bit differently. And it's easy to give. It's easy to, to give back to the Lord our tithe and offering. It's easy to make a meal for somebody and love them. It's easy to come and serve at the church. It's easy to sit down with a coworker and talk to them about the Lord when they're going through hardship. Because he has become that place of security. And when we were in Colonial Williamsburg this past week, I loved how we were, we were sitting in one of their sessions. And they would try to make it uh, interactive. And they want us to see in this moment that people in history are real people. With the same fears and struggles and likes and dislikes that you and I have. And so through that, they're asking people questions. They'll um, maybe say, what's your favorite flower? What's something that you can't live without? And people are naming them. And so they turn to my daughter, Haley, who is nine, and they say, where do you feel the safest? And she sits there for a moment, and she goes, home and church. And in that moment, I thought she has found security. You know, we can only provide so much security for her, but God has provided that extra. And so for you this morning, find that security in him, whether it's in your finances to trust and know that he provides, maybe it's in your health, whatever it is, as you give today, give knowing that God is your security. So Father, oh, so there's many ways to give. You can give in the offering envelope in the seat back pocket in front of you, and then after service, drop it off in the back so you can text to give, the app, right here, Vanna White, all of these options are available to you. Uh, so I'll pray over that. But God, I thank you that our security does not change like the seasons. It doesn't change with the wind and the storms of life. But Father, our security is found planted in you, strong and secure in you. So as we give today, we give with a grateful heart thankful for all that you have given us, that we are secure knowing our place in heaven with you for eternity, secure that you have our health in your hands, that you have our life in your hands, that you care for us, you care for our loved ones far more than we can. And we thank you that you are that security. Make that more known to each one of us. In Jesus' name, amen. 
Amen. All right, well, we have a fun video. Two weeks ago, we had our church picnic, and we did not let the rain stop us. We had fun. So we're going to play a fun video uh, with some pictures. All right, so hey, even if you're going to be inside, there's a lot of things to do. We had some wonderful times together. Uh, this week, we have our prayer meetings on Tuesday and Wednesdays. Make those a priority. We always say that prayer is a priority, right? If we are not moving forward in our prayer time, we are going to be growing stagnant or away from God. And so we want to grow in that time with him. So make that a priority. We have youth group this Wednesday in the back at 7 o'clock. So it's the same time as prayer. It makes it easy. And then youth next week at Pastor Ben and I's house, we are going to be carving pumpkins and having some fun. So you'll get to hear more about that at youth group. All right. And then we have Operation Christmas Child. Every year we get the wonderful opportunity uh, to just love little ones from around the world and share the gospel with them. And we do that through filling shoeboxes. So watch this quick video. My name is Kreshnik Jahaya, and I come from Southeastern Europe. I was six years old during the war in Kosovo, which left a lot of people very poor. The place was just devastated. It was the, the houses were burned, the schools were, were destroyed. There was a lot of um, pain and poverty. My family decided to stay in Kosovo during the whole time to shelter from one place to another. We would try to sleep in my mother's lap with the whole neighborhood in, in one basement. So it was, it was tight, it was um, hot, no room to play, no room to move, loud to the point where we couldn't sleep, we couldn't rest. A couple years after, we had this really cool group of people come in to our school. These people came with their smiles and they came with, with a light heart. It was Christmas time. We heard the story of Joseph and Mary and how Jesus was born. I got lost in the story because it reminded me as a six-year-old in the basements when we were trying to shelter. It was just that parallel of, of how Jesus never had a place to be born and they had to put him in a manger, find whatever means they can to, for him to be born. I related to that and I wanted to know more. I was curious. Then we, we lined up, we got our boxes. It was the best day of my life. I had never received something that was my own. Together with the box, there was a pamphlet, and it came from the church for a kids' ministry. I was more curious, and it just kept building and building. About 10 years old, I decided to give my life to, to Jesus. I grew up to lead that ministry, and I believe to this day that whoever put that box together, prayed about that, and prayed for an eight-year-old boy somewhere in the world to receive and it will come to know Jesus. Well, that's, that's what happened. An eight-year-old boy received a gift and changed his life forever. Amen. So you can be a part of changing an eight-year-old boy's life. And sometimes we don't get to hear the stories of the people that we impact, but in heaven one day, you'll get to see it. And what a beautiful day that will be to know the impact that you've made on somebody. So there is information about in the back at the table of how to pack a shoebox, $10 for shipping on that shoebox for a donation. Um, and you actually go onto their website to pay for that. 
um, and, and then we'll ship it out from here. But the reason we do that is you can then actually track where your box goes. So if getting online is difficult for you, I'm happy to do it here as well. But we want to make sure that if you enjoy getting to track where your box gets delivered um, so that you can be praying over that, it's a really, it's a really great thing. So uh, make sure you do that. And it's a great thing to do along with your kids, especially coming into the holiday season when, right, I want, I want, I want. <laughs> <laughs> starts to become heard quite a bit. Uh, women, we have uh, our Bible study this Tuesday um, at 6.30 here, so make plans for it. And then tonight, we have the Aspire Ladies event going on. It's at 5 o'clock. I will send out a text to everybody that signed up to just get that information back into your hands again. But uh, Pastor Mamie organized, if you are interested, at Harmony Inn at 3 o'clock to meet for dinner. So if you want to come for dinner at 3 o'clock at Harmony Inn, you can just respond back to my text, and we'll know how many seats to grab. Sound good? And then I heard a couple people wanting to carpool. So if that's you, come see me after service, and we will work out a plan because we all kind of come from different areas a little bit, and we can meet some at the church and some at houses. So let me know if that is you. And trick-or-treating, remember, keep bringing that candy. We are filling up uh, back there, and I love it more, more, more because... You know what, if we love them with candy and hot dogs and cotton candy and all the good things, uh, then we can have a better opportunity to share the gospel with those that are hurting. And that's our ultimate goal. So thank you, and Pastor Stephen Mamie. Amanda, good morning. Good morning, good morning. <clears throat> well, it wasn't worship awesome. Yeah, we could just, like when they were practicing earlier, I said, man, just play that forever. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be ready. I'd be ready. Well, a good morning, church. God is good. <laughs> I might want to say welcome home. <clears throat> welcome home, and you belong here. Yeah, and for the last couple of weeks, we shared messages along this line, uh, and we were declaring that uh, God's word says in uh Ecclesiastes 3, verse 11, that uh, God has uh, put eternity, he's planted eternity in every person's heart. And it comes back down to that only God himself alone can satisfy that hunger. Well, you've heard it said that there's, there's a God-shaped hole in a human heart, and only God can fill it. And that is true. That is true. Uh, Let's, let's start off with prayer today. Father God, we understand and we see through media that uh, these are difficult times. We see that Israel has been attacked. We see war. Just, just like this man from Kosovo. Even during war, Lord, you move you move in supernatural ways. There are many people who, who've lost their lives and stood before the truth. And there's many more that are going to lose their lives. And so we ask by your spirit that you would move in such a way that men and women would have the opportunity to accept you, Jesus, as their Lord, as their Savior, I pray for both sides, that you would open the eyes of their understanding, that you would remind them of, of little seeds that have been planted in their heart all their lives, and bring many into your kingdom. We pray for a quick end to this. Lord, we understand your word says there's going to be wars and rumors of wars. And that's just leading up into the times of when you come back. And we keep our eyes focused on you. Because you are King of kings and Lord of lords. And you're coming back to set everything right. Thank you, Jesus. Now, Father, we, we, we pray that Today, we would bring you joy. 
each one of us would bring you joy. We ask you, Spirit of the living God, that you would school us today, that we might become mature children and walk in the fullness that you've ordained for us, that we would grow to be ambassadors you've called us to be and fulfill our role at this time in human history. I pray, Holy Spirit, that you would speak through Pastor Mamie and I today, that your words would resonate in our hearts. Bear witness with our spirits so we walk in your truth now and forever. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Amen and amen. God is good. Well, uh, it's uh, we had a... Uh, where we were going to be going in a different direction, but the Holy Spirit has has moved us, and so we're just following the Spirit of the Living God. Amen. Amen. And uh, it's important for us all to be aware of how the Spirit moves, how the Spirit Himself uh, is dealing with us, because He's He's with us. He's on this earth, and if you're born again, He dwells within you. And just like that scripture in Romans chapter 8, he bears witness with your spirit. And many times people will say, I heard the Lord say. It doesn't mean you're hearing a voice. It's an inward witness. Now, when God does speak audibly to you, listen, know that that trouble's ahead. So you really don't want to hear him speak to you audibly. (laughs) You, You want to be led by his spirit. Amen. Well, when a person gives their life to Jesus, there is a change in spiritual kingdoms that happens. And let's begin, and we want to look at a scripture that uh, really plain, plainly teaches that is in Colossians chapter 1, verse 13. And I want everybody to turn there because we're going to be hanging around Colossians. We're going from Colossians to Philippians to Ephesians and wherever the Holy Spirit leads us. Colossians chapter 1, it's a letter written, authored by the Spirit of God, written by the Apostle Paul. And it's written to the church at Colossae. And if you notice that these letters are all written to local churches, it's really important for us to see that. Colossians. Chapter 1, verse 13, and I'm going to read out of the Living Bible. I love hearing those pages turn. It's exciting to me, to tell you the truth. I just love that sound. I hear a couple more pages. Colossians, chapter 1, verse 13. For he, Jesus, has rescued us out of the darkness and gloom of Satan's kingdom. And brought us into the kingdom of his dear son, who bought our freedom with his blood and forgave us all our sins. When a person surrenders to Jesus Christ, making him not just Savior, but Lord of their life, the Holy Spirit does what I would consider the greatest miracle that could happen on this planet, other than Jesus coming back. He creates, recreates your inward man, your spirit man, is recreated from a dead spirit to a living spirit. And you are transferred out of kingdoms to a new kingdom. Nothing on the outside has changed. You you still look the same. Probably you might have a gleam in your eye, to tell you the truth. (laughs) But you become a new creation in Christ Jesus that you've been transferred by the power of the Holy Spirit. Sometimes we don't think about this as something like that is a marvelous miracle. We just think, oh yeah. But what did it take to have you born again? The blood of Christ and the working of the Holy Spirit. And when you do that, you become a citizen in in the kingdom of God. A citizen in the kingdom of God. 
And we want to take a look at that. Go turn toward the front of your Bible a few pages, maybe just even one or two, to Philippians chapter 3, verse 20. Let's see, you go back a few pages. <laughs> go back. This is how my mind Toward the, my go mind back says. A few pages. If you're going the, back, you're going. Go to the front this is the back. <laughs> Revelation, by the way. <laughs> Anyhow, it's, it's Philippians chapter 3, verse 20, and this is really a remarkable change that has happened to everybody who's called upon the name of Jesus. Philippians chapter 20, and I'm going to read out of the Living Bible again. But our citizenship is in heaven, and from it we await a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Now go back again or forward again. <laughs> Go to Ephesians, Colossians, then we're going to Philippians, and now we're going to be in Ephesians. These are all letters to local churches. Ephesians 2, 19 and 20. So now I'm going to run out of the English Standard Bible. Here we go. I love hearing those pages turn. It, it just shows that you're hungry for God. You're hungry for God. And we have to be hungry for God. Amen. Every burning heart is holy ground. We just sang that. Amen. We declared that. And we ask that God give you a burning heart for him. Amen. So then you are no longer strangers and aliens... But you are fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God. Built on the foundation of the apostles and the prophet, Jesus Christ himself being the cornerstone. I want everybody to say this. I'm a citizen of heaven. 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 My true citizenship is in heaven. My true citizenship is in heaven. You're getting it. <laughs> now, there is a lot to learn about becoming a citizen yeah. of heaven. Right. We, we mentioned this last week, um, that just like in the natural, if somebody came, wanted to become a citizen of this country, and we have a couple people here in the church mm -hmm. that have done that. And I, I should have asked you, we should have asked you, what exactly was the process that you had to go through? But I'm sure you had to learn some history of the United States and learn the Constitution, of what, what the basics of the Constitution are. Because you're coming into an entirely different culture. Yeah. And um, you have to acclimate yourself if you're going to live as a citizen in a new nation uh, to speak its language, to abide by its laws, mm -hmm. to honor the laws and the values. And then ultimately, you do have to declare an oath. Did you not have to... Raise your right hand and declare an oath of your allegiance to this new country <clears throat> and to follow its constitution. And I, as I, we were thinking about this, uh, I thought about my grandma who immigrated here uh, in 1910 when she was 12 years old. She came with her sister. Uh, she was from what was called then Austria-Hungary. Mm -hmm. uh, her Both of her parents had died and there were some relatives already that had come over and lived here, and so she and her sister made her way over. Uh, she, I remember her saying that she, I wish that I had asked her more questions, you know, now about her background, but I do remember her telling us some stories about how communism were, was taking over, and they were coming into the, her, those little peasant villages and basically dominating everything that they did, telling them how much food they can uh, mm -hmm grow and they they were not allowed to cut down firewood which wood was their only means of heating right. their little houses and so she said if we ever did cut down firewood in order to so when the men came on horses to look they would look at our firewood and she said we would rub dirt on the edges of the some of the sticks and things that we cut so that it would look like oh that's been there this isn't a fresh cut so that we would have something to burn in our house and so you could imagine um, when there was this opportunity to come to America, the land of the free, this yeah. was their chance for, for freedom and for just an opportunity to live a much better life. And uh, her first job, she said when she came over here at age 12, as a young teenager, was washing dishes 
standing on a little stool because she was only about five foot one, and so she could hardly reach the top of the sink. But I thought, you know, these people went through a lot of stuff in order to find freedom, and there was a purposeful flood of immigrants, right. if you know anything about this area, that came specifically, we're talking here about Lindora, Butler, uh, that came from Eastern Europe in the early 1900s. It was basically cheap labor for the steel mills. Right. Poland Standard, Armco, the steel mills of Pittsburgh. Um, and the people came, but what I discovered, because I discovered a document that whenever my mom passed a couple years ago, and looking through her papers, there was a document from my grandma. And I was reading through it. It was her intention for citizenship here in America. And it, in, in the writing, it, it, it showed how people had to come over with legal documentation. Right. And um, Hello. I'll, show, I'll show the first document here. This was the, one of the papers. I know you can't really see it, read it, but it has her photo on it. Um, and it, it showed this, that she actually applied for this years after she came when she was 12, but then she married and had six children, and now she was applying for citizenship. And so it lists all her children, but on that paper, it sh it, she had to write where she was born, which was Austria-Hungary. You had to say where you set sail from, which was, for her, it was Germany mm -hmm. to come here. And then it had written there in the fine print, my lawful entry for arrival was on, like, this date. The na it named the ship that she was on, and then the port city where she arrived, which was Baltimore. Um, and as I read it, you know, I was just struck especially now by just the hundreds of thousands of people who are crossing over our borders, for one thing, illegally <laughs> into this country. And it is permitted. I mean, we know that it's illegal. The government knows it's illegal, but it's permitted. I mean, and we're not against people coming into this country. Immigrants, I mean, I've, no. I'm a second generation f from an immigrant person. Uh, one but we do really want to great. do it lawfully. <laughs> Right. And I think to myself, if the government is saying, go on, come in, you can come in illegally. When you come in breaking the rules, do, mm -hmm. do we wonder if people are going to want to keep the rules as tightly as they should when they get here? Um, but it all just kind of points to the lawlessness. Right. You know, that's just increasing because when the government just says, yeah, come on and we'll figure it all out later, I just <laughs> think this is not right. Um, but there was the next slide I'll show you. It's a little bit larger. I tried to enlarge it, the print on it. But that part of that document, uh, the portion of it reads, and I'm going to read it from here, because it says, um, number 11, I'm not an anarchist. <laughs> These people had to take an oath to this. I'm not an anarchist. I'm not a polygamist, nor a believer in the practice of polygamy. I declare that it is my intention in good faith to become a citizen of the United States of America that I will, before being admitted to citizenship, renounce absolutely and forever all allegiance and fidelity to any foreign prince, potentate, state, or sovereignty of whom or of which I may be at the time of admission to citizenship a citizen or subject of, and that it's my intention to reside permanently in the U.S. Hallelujah. And when I read that, especially <coughs> about renouncing forever any allegiance to a foreign prince or a potentate or yeah. a sovereignty, I immediately applied it to our citizenship in heaven and thought, <laughs> we, there is scripture calls him the prince of the power of the air. Right. And I immediately thought of Satan as that, the prince of the power of the air, and how important it is that we like handle the same way our becoming a citizen yes. of heaven, that we need to swear and declare an oath, that we will renounce our past allegiance to him yes, and declare our allegiance to our new king because this is really what a citizen coming here to, to become a citizen of this nation would have to do. How much more should we have to consider Come on. an oath of uh, renouncing uh, who who we were under before and saying, you know, this is my new, you're my new leader, declaring allegiance, of course, to Jesus, our yes, new king. our new king. And to his kingdom and <laughs> his ways. Turn to John chapter 17. 
This is just one of many scriptures. John, the Gospel of John, chapter 17. And then we're going to go to Luke right after that, which is going toward the front of the book. Thanks. <laughs> See? That dyslexia thing. <laughs> yes. I do have dyslexia, so have mercy on me, folks. <laughs> John chapter 17. Tremendous what we find in the Bible. Tremendous. This is Jesus speaking here in John chapter 17, and verse 16 is what we want to focus on. John 17, 16, and Jesus says, They are not of the world, worldly, belonging to the world, just as I am not of the world. Say it again, I'm a citizen of heaven. I'm a citizen of heaven. Yes, my true citizenship is in heaven. My true citizenship is in heaven. Ha <laughs> ha, praise God. Now go to Luke 14, the Gospel of Luke. Luke 14. Love to hear those pages turn. Luke 14, and we're going to look at verse 33. It's really important that we put our eyes on these things because that's a living word that you're reading off the page. It's just not letters. Jesus' words are spirit and their life. And when you open yourself up to that word of spirit and life, it'll change you. It'll refine you. You'll become more and more conformed to the image of Christ. Jesus says this, So then any of you who does not forsake, and I'm going to read out of the Amplified, Renounce, surrender, claim to, and give up and say goodbye to all that he has cannot be my disciple. Sounds very familiar. Really similar to the, the uh, natural uh, citizenship coming into the United States. And it, it's important. How much more, like Pastor Mabey said, how much more should we renounce our past allegiance to the world and that evil dictator, Satan, and then swear allegiance to our new king. Truth is, Holy Spirit power is released through your words. The spirit of faith is, I believe in my heart and I speak with my mouth. Jesus said, speak to your mountain. Yes, he said, speak to your mountain. And when we renounce all ties, verbally, when we renounce all ties to Satan, there is power in the spirit realm to break that. And we need to do that. Because we used to live, we all, every single one of us, we, we're born sinners, folks. We're born sinners. And some of us moved that path a long, long time. But we want even the smell of all that off of us. And you break it by your words. We, did, we need to renounce our old citizenship. We have to. This is how you break those spiritual ties. Because when you start to attack the devil this way, he runs and hides. He, he, he doesn't want you to do this because he still has a little hold of us. But what we do, we, we speak it. A lot of times, even when we're born again, we, we still bound to certain Sin. thoughts, <laughs> lifestyles. That's why we have to break free those soul ties. And I'll tell you, unfortunately, many people in uh, Christian circles are too passive about this. Well, they make fun of it. They scoff at the need to be able to do this. But it's a common practice in the early church, all the way up to the 6th century. Common practice, and it started at baptism. After somebody got born again, they would make these declarations and confessions and renunciations before they were water baptized. And 
church history, you take a look at it, church history says that there was actually demonic manifestations as people were released and being set free. And you see that in Jesus' ministry. The early church fathers held a clear belief that a person who experienced salvation and was subsequently water baptized, that there was a need to radically, consciously make that break and stop their allegiance with the devil in, his, in the world, in the world system. Break it by the power of your words and faith in your heart. When you believe it like that, then the Holy Spirit gets into action. You, dec you make a declaration to all the spirits of darkness is what you do. And this was done publicly. And it really did mark a pledge that they have turned their back on Satan and the world and they're going to live in the kingdom of God and they're going to walk in his ways. Everybody say it. I'm a citizen of heaven. I'm a citizen of heaven. I'm a true citizen of heaven. I'm a true citizen of heaven. And, you know, you began the message by saying that we were going to go in a direction with <clears throat> this message, tying it into welcome home, you belong here, yeah. and then talking about a commitment. What does it mean to belong to a local church and the commitment involved? And it, it, we actually had some a little outline, like where we wanted to go, and it just seemed like every <laughs> time we tried to go there, it was like, this is not working. I feel like the Holy Spirit's t pulling us in this direction. Yeah. This does tie together with the sense of commitment in a local church because if you cannot, if we haven't understood the solid commitment we are to make, turn our back, if we're going this way in the world, we turn our back on the world, we're going this way in the solid commitment and pledge that we are to make to Christ yes. and say goodbye to that old kingdom. It's very hard to come into a church and even understand what this is about because the church is meant to ask also for commitment mm -hmm. to go on the mission and do the work of God. And so if we can't, if we don't understand, if we have one foot in the world oh. <laughs> and one foot in the kingdom, Jesus said a kingdom divided against itself will what? Fall. Will fall. He said, put your hand to the plow and don't look back. Amen. So this divided loyalty in our life affects us. It affects us spiritually. It affects how we will grow and mature in the things of God. And actually, when you think about, we say we're going to renounce the devil and his works, like to resist the devil and renounce his works, we do have to first submit ourselves to God. It says yeah. that in James 4. Let's go look at that. If we want to go towards the end of your Bible. <laughs> <laughs> or, or you go forward in yeah, it. Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> James, it's good to have Bible tabs and then, then you just don't. Yeah. That's why it takes us so long to figure out a sermon. <laughs> <laughs> no, say it this way. No, say it this way. <laughs> but James 4, 7 says to submit yourselves. Yeah. Therefore to God. This comes first, submitting ourselves to God. And mm -hmm. submission has this sense of I'm all in. And I understand that when we come into Christ, we don't get it at first. Right. You know, we sort of dabble our feet in. And like we said, sometimes people come into the church, it's like, ah, oh, this is so different. I want to run back out into the world. But eventually, if, when you begin to read the word of God, you begin to understand Jesus is asking for an yes. all-in commitment. Turn your back on the things of the past, put your hand to the plow, and don't keep looking back there. Luke 14. Because you can't go in, t in two directions at once. Right. You know, you can't drive your car and not crash into something if you keep just drive by looking through your rearview mirror and seeing what's behind you. Try it sometime. No, don't. <laughs> don't try it. <laughs> don't try it. Sorry. <laughs> don't do that, Warren, whenever you <laughs> in your driveway. <laughs> But when we declare our submission <laughs> to Christ and our commitment to him and his lordship over your life, it's a covering in the spirit. I don't know that we yes. understand this enough. Our eyes need to get open to it. Yes. We are in a spiritual war. And the de devils and demons understand this, the law and the kingdom, like you need to be submitted to your king. That's where the power lies. That's right. So if you're like dabbling over here a little bit in the world, a little bit in the kingdom, 
the devil will he'll want to push you around no matter what but he's going to have more ability to push you yep. around when you haven't made your stand and said i'm here i'm serving the lord right he's my king i'm a citizen of heaven i want to follow his ways yes so these things in the spirit are very real and we're seeing such darkness in the world this is important yeah. for us to understand we have to know that Satan bows to Jesus, right? That's correct. That it's the name of Jesus that he bows to. And in the spirit realm, I, like I said, there are spiritual laws that right. must be abided by. And they will bow. It's just like the authority of Christ. It's, it's like a, you know, a policeman coming on the scene and st stopping things, stopping traffic. It's like there's authority because there's a law behind it. To make that happen. Yes. Well, when Jesus steps on the scene, everything's bowing, right? And Satan and demons aren't afraid of me and you in particular. They're afraid of him. Yes. And they're also afraid of the person, though, yes. that is abiding in him, who trusts fully in him. That's right. And so when we're speaking, we're speaking by his authority. It's not just your words sounding so firm and strong. We have to know that when I'm opening my mouth and making this declaration, they're hearing Christ speak through yes. me. Yes. That's what makes them tremble. And so your declaration of I'm turning my back on this, the old life, and I'm repenting of yes. those sins, and I'm asking you for help, and I'm turning to you, Lord, carries power, spiritual power. Because Jesus will back that yes, in the heavenlies for, for you. sure. So there's this genuine commitment to the Lord is vital for us to know and walk in his authority and power. We cannot just say we know him and then want to use his power if we're not uh, really obeying him. Yeah. The, like I said, demons and the devil will know. Like if you turn to Acts, there's a little story here, Acts 19. I think we'll illustrate this. So which way are we going in the Bible? <laughs> We're going back. <laughs> go back to Acts 19. I'll go forward to oh. Acts 19. <laughs> <laughs> now, the, this is the story of some Jewish <laughs> exorcists who tried to use the name of Jesus to expel demons. Okay, they weren't followers of Christ, right. but they had heard and seen what Paul was doing to expel demons, and they were going to try it out. Yeah. Acts 19.13. Acts 19.13. We'll start right there. Acts 19.13. This is in, the, in Ephesus. <clears throat> Acts 19 is when Paul comes and starts the church at Ephesus. Yeah, they were going <clears throat> to try to use this like almost like an incantation. We're going to say what he said, and we're going to get the power of God to move on our behalf. The, yeah, it's pretty amazing what did happen in the, in the book uh, or in the city of Ephesus when Paul came and was explaining this thing. And even this incident, uh, people came and, and burned all their uh, occult books. But look what it says here in verse 13. And some of the itinerant Jewish exorcists <clears throat> took to invoke the name of the Lord Jesus over those who had evil spirits, saying, I adjure you by the Jesus whom Paul proclaims. Seven sons of a Jewish high priest named Sceva were doing this. <clears throat> but the evil spirit answered them, Jesus I know. And Paul I recognize, but who are you? And the man whom had the evil spirit leaped on them, mastered them all, and overpowered them. And so they fled the house naked and wounded. sit around and go what just happened <laughs> if you and I are going to renounce and successfully resist the devil your faith in Christ needs to be real it needs to be genuine it needs to be committed Jesus gave us his church authority to use his name Amen. some people have read the Bible <laughs> You see this in well, the Great Commission, Matthew 28. You see it in Mark 16. You, you see it in, in Luke, Luke 10, 19. You could look that up later. Make that note, 10, 19. It's an inheritance 
for every believer of Christ. Every citizen of heaven has the ability to use the name of Jesus and make demons leave. What, what's some of the things that God wants? Number one, what's the greatest commandment? There's where we start. It's just like what Jesus said in Luke 14. He says, the greatest commandment is to obey with all your heart. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul, and all your strength. And that commandment means what? We are committed. We're committed. You know, Jesus said in John, I think it's 14, 15, he says, if you love me, you will obey me. You know, we just don't want candy handed out here. We want the full gospel, don't we? Yeah. We want the hard sayings of Jesus, too, so that it'll straighten us up. Glory to God, because we're in a battle. We're in a war, and the devil hates your guts. He, he doesn't think, he play like he pretends that he's good, and he's going to lead you into some things, that's for sure. I know this stuff because I was involved with the occult many years ago. And then I saw the real power happen. And it's Jesus Christ. We need to love him. And when we express our love to him, that means we're obeying him. We need to learn what he, learn what he loves. And we need to love what he loves. And we need to hate what he hates. And the more time we spend getting to know him through the word, through meditating on the word, and praying the word, that's when we're going to fall deeper in love with Jesus because it's his word. In the beginning was the word, and the word was With God. God. Yeah. Thank you, Warren. <laughs> <laughs> That's how your faith will grow. That's how you're going to be able to stand in the face of all opposition because the devil is a deceiver, and he'll come around and look like you're surrounded, and you have no way out. And this is what you say, when you're surrounded like that, I had this little vision. Well, listen, I know how to deal with demons. Right in your face, kind of like those uh, alien monsters that the movie shows had, right in front of your face. And you look at them and say, mm, you ought to be pretty afraid of me because I know who I know. They're afraid of you when you know. It's all deception, and they're all trying to find a weakness in you. And when they do, they'll exploit it over and over and over. It's a battle that we got to win. It's true. Spirit realm is more real than this realm because this realm came from the spirit realm. So God is asking us to live in both realms at one time, and he's giving us instructions on how to do it, how to be more than a conqueror, how to be victorious over yeah. Satan, death, yeah. and, the, and the world. Yeah. Because Satan has been defeated. And there. we've said this before, that we do live in the tension of the already, it's already done. We're, we are in the kingdom, but it's not yet. We're in, we live in this realm yes. of faith right now, that the tension of before we actually see him face to face. Now we're on assignment in the earth. The church is on assignment in Amen. the earth. Uh, Jesus came to the earth. He loves his church. It's his body. Think there. about it. The body of Christ. You and I, every person, every follower of Christ is a member of his body. A citizen of heaven. Yeah. With a glorious inheritance and some work to do yes. while we're here. We're not here to just do our own thing. Come on. This is why we, we, we were talking about commitment to the church and talking about it on this level. It was like, wait a minute. I felt like the Holy Spirit was saying, take it to this other bigger level. Let's see where all the commitment begins. And yeah. we have to have our eyes open to even the warfare that we're in and why we need to gather together in unity. Yes. Because that unity of purpose brings a, a spiritual power that will be released in a greater way among us. And so Jesus gave his church authority. Yes. He gave us his authority and his power to be used. Why? To manifest the kingdom of God here in the earth. That's right. We need to be people who want to manifest the kingdom of God in the earth. He said, I'm going to build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against the church. This is really good. 
Now think about it. In 1 John, we just studied that out for several weeks. When we got to chapter 5, we saw that scripture that said that the whole world is under the power of the evil one. So it's as though if, if, the, if the church, the gates of hell, will not prevail against the church, truly the story of the Bible is really the earth was captured. It's like the whole world is gated by hell. Yes. And the people held captive to sin and bondage to sin and eternal death without the knowledge of God. Right. Behind those gates. But those gates are not going to prevail against the church. We're here on assignment. God's saying, go crash the gates. Yes. Hallelujah. Take my power and manifest the kingdom right here. Because those gates will not prevail against the church when the church is operating in her power. Yes. And we are met. This is the whole point. Jesus has already conquered the devil. He's conquered all the forces of darkness. That's right. See, you and I now are to go out to manifest the kingdom, to bring his presence yes. on the scene by telling the gospel. We're the occupying force now in the earth. Have you ever thought about your life that way? I know. I remember years ago when this became clear and clear to us. It was like, where have we been? Yeah. Why were we never taught this in church? Why did I think it was about just coming to church and hearing something to help me a little bit and then kind of go do my thing for six days and come back and feel? We're here with great purpose. Amen. And we're here with a glorious inheritance that we need to understand. And that's what it begins with, our eyes getting open come to Come on it. now. Our spiritual eyes, because I believe the church is in much of a slumber. Truth. The church is in so much of a slumber, our eyes need to be open to see what we have, and that takes the power of the Holy Spirit to do that. You, As we read the Word of God and we ask the Holy Spirit, reveal what this means to me, he'll do it. Yes. But see, it takes faith, and it takes the genuine commitment to when I see what I, when you show me, I want to obey it. Yes. Because you can approach the Word of God like an intellectual person, read it, and in the back of your mind, it's like, well, that's nice, but I'm not going to do that, and that's that's too hard, and I, maybe <laughs> I'll try this, but... <laughs> No, see, this is all in in our kingdom. Yes. I turn my back on that attitude. If God will give me grace, this is the, this is the yes. other part of it. it you, you, we are not working out our salvation on our own strength. He will give us the strength and the, the grace that we need to fulfill our purpose. Yes, hallelujah. He's not left us without anything that we don't need. And so, Paul, I, we want to bring up this scripture in Ephesians 1. We pray this a lot during our prayer time. Yeah, let's start Ephesians in verse 17. One. As our eyes are open to see what we've been given, your mind will become renewed, and you'll be if you're willing to obey it, yep. your life will become slowly transformed. And, and we will manifest the power of God in us and through us and to the people around us. Because yes. we're here to help set captives free. Amen. Ephesians 1, 17 to 23. This is a prayer. We want, we want you to read it from your own Bible. Yeah, we have it on the screen, but you really need to mark this in your Bible. Read it for yourself. Pray it over yourself. Pray it for your family. Routinely pray this prayer. And when you, when you find out what it says, you'll want to pray this prayer. Ephesians chapter 1. Verse 17, he's praying that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you a spirit of wisdom and of revelation in the knowledge of him. And so right there, and just for a pause, go, go. you would pray and say, Father, give me a spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of you. You have to ask personally, because you could just read that like you're just reading a bunch of words. This is a relationship with the Holy yes. Spirit who's saying, I'm your teacher and guide, but you need to talk to me. So when you read, this is how we make this into a prayer. And then verse 18 makes it easy because it says. <laughs> right, it says, I pray that the eyes of your heart would be enlightened so that you will know what is the hope of your calling and what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. See, stop. 
It's like, Lord, you gave me an inheritance. There's an inheritance in me. I want to walk in it. Show it to me. Yes. Open my eyes to see it. And you could just go on with that, with that prayer. In verse 19, 19, look at this. And what is the boundless greatness of the power toward us who believe? Lord, I'm a believer. I want to start to operate in the power that you've given to me as an inheritance. As a citizen of heaven, I want to operate in the power that you've given. Because we've already prayed for wisdom and knowledge and understanding these things. We want our eyes to be open. We want our eyes to be open. We want a discerning spirit in our heart. Amen? Because he's a deceiver. And we need to know these things. These are Yes. <laughs> This is the same power. Look at what it says there. These are in accordance with the working of his strength and of his might, which he brought about in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him in his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also the one to come. And he put all things. I like that word all. He put all things in subjection under his feet, and made him the head over all things concerning the church, which is his body. The fullness of him who fills all in all. See, that scripture, that, that section of scripture is telling us that the very resurrection power of Christ. Yes. The power of the Holy Spirit that came in and raised him from the dead. That's the power that's in you and me as believers. It's available to all of us. I you can sit there and just feel like, well, I don't feel like I have any, I know we, I don't feel like I have any power, but as we pray, do you want to feel like you have yeah. the power? Come on now. Do you want that manifestation of power in your life? Well, yeah. then we talk to the Holy Spirit. Show me my inheritance. Help me understand who you've made me to be. When the church begins to pray and see who Christ has made us in yes. him, Power, something's going to wake up. The church is going to wake up. Yes, because in your you, personal life and in, yeah. in the life of the church. Because have you ever wondered why we don't see more spiritual power manifested in America? We hmm. do hear about it on the mission field often. I do believe it's because people are more desperate. Yes. They have nothing else. They're hungry. They're thirsty. And God will fill them. Why don't we see this here in America? Have you ever asked yourself that question? We have over the years, yes. certainly have. Healing, why not more healings and miracles? Why not more salvations? Why don't people want to be baptized, filled with the Holy Spirit more? Why are there people falling away now? Yeah. Why are families, because statistically they'll say Christian families are just as broken by you know, divorce as those in the world. Why are so many professing Christians just as sometimes confused, worried, yeah. fearful as people in the world, or just as depressed sometimes, troubled, confused, captivated by sin. Right. I, I completely believe it's because we don't know who we are in Christ. That's exactly we right. We do not know what we've been given. We have not been praying those prayers enough to say, show me. And so we live on this natural level all the time. The church isn't hungry enough. That's right. Or thirsty enough. Because when a person gets hungry, you know, and thirsty, you do so, you're desperate. It's like you'll yeah. do anything to get your food and drink, won't you? But see, we can be so satiated here in America. It's okay. like everything's good. I just like it comfortable. And the culture is teaching us to just really go in that direction. Make it easier and easier and easier. All but the while you become captive to the darkness. All the while. You know, we got to be hungry. We got to be thirsty for God. We got to get rid of that old dead religious thinking that we have. It has to go. We have to cry out for more. Yeah. I don't care what other people think, you know? Well, when you're desperate and you yes. cry out, it's like you don't care what people think. You want what you need. Yeah, and if the Holy Spirit says, spit in his eyes and they'll open up. Well, that's what Jesus did. Yeah, the Father. Come on him, now. Yeah. When your heart is really longing for more of God, you, you know, Jesus will fill it. The Holy Spirit will fill it. You've got to understand, I want my inheritance. God has given you the inheritance. We just read the scripture. He's given you the inheritance. You have it. It's not like I'm dying and then I get my inheritance. He's going to look at you and say, why didn't you do anything? Yeah, right. 
I don't want that. No. I mean, and look at the state of the world. Oh, my god. Israel being attacked. Like, war declared. Like, we're looking at troubling times. Tribulation times. Tribulation times. times, like, unfolding right before our eyes. Yes, so The indeed. church needs to be rising up, filling with power. As the darker the world gets, the church is meant to be the light and to Amen. shine. Yes. Amen. And so I, I, the scripture, Ephesians 5, awake, awake, O oh sleeper. Paul prayed this, mentioned this to the church in Ephesus. Yes. I don't rise from the dead and Christ will shine on you. Hallelujah. We continually pray this for the church. Awake, awake, O oh sleeper. Have our eyes open to see what yes. God, Jesus has done for us. Yes. Because some of you, and I say this, some of you are bound by religious spirits that are keeping you bound to the natural and afraid yes. of the supernatural. Well... You know, I, I don't want to get too fanatical about this. Like, you may have given your life to Christ years ago, and you may have served in the church, yeah. faithfully attended, and that's good. We should. Yes. But you've thought, well, that's enough. I don't want to go too far. I don't want to get overboard and fanatical with this. Jesus said, get out of the boat. But think about it. He's the one who says, get out of the boat and walk on water. Be like, what? That's how we sometimes feel. Yeah. Right? He's calling us like to shake off the grave clothes. Yes, like hallelujah. Lazarus, like take off the <laughs> grave clothes and renounce the old ties That's to the right. world. Renounce the old citizenship. Say it. Even if you feel like, I don't know if I have power to do it. Do you want to do it? The Lord will supply the power. Yes. He just needs your desire. He needs you to just say, I'm in. I'm, I am all in. Yes. And so we want to, as we close the service, we want to make some some declarations here. And you know, some it, renouncing. But it, it does first begin by declaring and establishing your full commitment to Christ. To obey him. You know, to know that he loves you. He died on the cross for the forgiveness of your sin. And rose from the grave so that we could be made holy and righteous Hallelujah. before him. No matter how you feel this morning, if you are a believer... He's, he's blessed us and accounted us as righteous before him. It doesn't mean that if you're living in sin, he thinks that's okay. He doesn't. He does this not. This is part of repentance. This is part of, well, wait a minute. I lived in sin in the world. If I'm going this way, I'm, I'm not living in sin. I need to repent of sin. I want to go all in. Yes. I, I want to live the life that you've called me to live. And so there's this admission of the need to repent and yes. to tell him, I'm, I'm turning from that sin. I don't want to do that anymore. Give me grace to change. Then we need to renounce Satan and all his works, all his ways. And I tell you what, a lot of times this involves giving forgiveness to the people who hurt you. Yeah. People who wronged you, you need to forgive them. Because you really have no, that really weakens the power in the yes. spirit. Walking in unforgiveness and bitterness. That's a wide open door for the devil to push you around. And so if we're going to make these declarations, that's part of, well, Jesus says, if you're going to pray, stand praying, forgive that's right. anyone who's wronged you, just like your heavenly father has forgiven you. And so we, this is an important part. Yes. It's, if we're going to be the citizens of the kingdom, we got to be all in on this stuff, right? Come on. And so we... we, we as we shine brighter, we yes. will shine brighter as we do this. This is the whole point, to bring God glory and to walk in the power that he's designated for us for the day and time that we live in. Yeah, we need and, to prepare our hearts yeah. for it. So we, because what you say over your life, out of your mouth, carries power in the spirit realm. Yeah. And so we put together some declarations uh, of, what a, of what a citizen of heaven would make. And so uh, I want us to stand up and I want us to make these declarations of faith that bind us together with Christ yeah. and his kingdom and renounce the work of the devil. These should be coming up on the PowerPoint here so we and can see You want to say it. these again. These are not to be recited. Think of yourself as standing the way a citizen, a person who wants to become a citizen of the United States would say, I'm taking this oath. I'm raising my right hand, and maybe they still make you put your hand on a Bible. That we're saying this so that Jesus hears it. We're saying it so that we hear it. We're saying it so the kingdom of darkness hears it. Right. This is, this is going through 
this realm into the spirit realm. Yes. And so these things are powerful. We want to say this and mean it. Yes. And something's going to happen. The power of God sure. is, will move in and through you. Because there may be things even that you renounce that you become free of today. That's correct. Just by making this oath in the name of Jesus. See, when so, you speak words, you license the entity that you speak. If you start saying, I'm no good, I do this, guess who's going to start to put that into practice? Those demon spirits are going to make sure they follow through on your words. But if we say, I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, then who's working on you now? Yes. Come on. So as a citizen of heaven, we're going to stand this morning, and we're going to, we're going to read these mm -hmm. together. Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus, I believe you are the Son of God. In the, the only way to, to God, God that you died, died on the cross for my sins and rose again from the dead. I repent and I renounce all my sins. I turn to you, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus, for mercy and forgiveness. I believe that you forgave me. I want to live fully for you, to obey you, and to hear and follow your voice. Jesus, you became a curse for me on the cross. Therefore, I release any curse from my life. I forgive those who wronged me. I renounce the devil and all spiritual forces of wickedness that rebel against God. I renounce all claim this world and the devil would have on me. I renounce the lies and deadly deceits of this world. I renounce the dead religious spirits that would hold me back. I renounce the sinful desires of the flesh that draw me away from the love of God. I release myself into the keeping of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. My allegiance is to you alone and your kingdom. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. We praise and worship team. We're going to sing that last song that we sing, and we're going to just shout out to heaven on this. Because that song says, chains fall, fear bow. Jesus, you change everything. Yes. So we just, we're going to worship God as we close out. Yes. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes.
transforming every part of our lives, Lord. And we declare these things. This is the power of your Holy Spirit in us right now. Chains fall, fear bow, fear now. Jesus, you change everything. citizens of heaven and we're going to live like it we're going to walk in the power of the Holy Spirit we're going to resist the devil we're going to submit our lives to God we're going to walk in the fullness of the gospel walk in the fullness of the gospel we see the early church we're, we're the latter church and we want that same power that that early church had. We want to know about it. We want to experience it. We surrender to you, Jesus. We keep our eyes fixed on you, not our problems, not ourselves. We look to you, and you keep us in perfect peace. I thank you, Lord, for what you did in our lives today, solidifying the truth that we've turned our back on this world and the devil and all of his demons. We're free from any curse. We give you glory and honor in this place, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just go ahead and remain standing. Uh, it is a pleasure that you are here with us today. Aren't you glad you did not miss church this morning? I tell you, when you miss, you miss something God has for you. And so if you have not received Christ as your personal Savior and you say, I, have, I am not a part of his inheritance that has been talked about today, and that is something that you want more information about, or maybe you want to make that prayer today, maybe you think, I think I've prayed it, I'm not really sure, make sure today that you are part of his family and that you have received his inheritance. Our prayer partners are over here to your left and they are ready to show you scripture, to pray with you according to God's word. So as you go, I pray that you would be blessed. In Jesus' name, amen.